Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. What is the United Nations International Labor Organization, commonly called ILO? What is ILO doing to work with workers around the world to raise labor standards and improve working conditions? We'll be back in just a moment to talk about these and other important issues. Welcome back to our program. Today we're taking a look at the United Nations International Labor Organization and what it's doing to help really improve workers' conditions around the world. My guest today is an expert in this, on this agency. My guest today is Mr. Jobert Wambo. Mr. Jobert Wambo, a Togo national, joined the International Labor Organization in 2013, taking up the position as Deputy Director General for Field Operations and Partnerships. Prior to this appointment, from September 2008 to July 2012, he was the Prime Minister of Togo. Mr. Wambo, welcome to today's Global Connections program. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you being with me today. Thank let's, you so much. Okay, let's start right <coughs> at the top and talk a little bit about the International Labor Organization. When was it formed? Why was it formed? What's its major mission? Uh, actually, uh, ILO was formed in 1919, uh, which is uh, at the end of the First uh, World War. Um, which so is kind of the oldest uh, United Nations uh, system uh, um, agency. Um, in a nutshell, what I will uh, I will say, you know, we have this uh, very uh, uh, very telling um, um, expression by saying that uh, there's no lasting peace without social justice. That summarizes uh, really uh, what ILO ILO does. So essentially, has been the repository of all the la labor related uh, international uh, standards that mm -hmm. we we setting up and making sure they are applied uh, in, uh, by all the ratifying uh, countries. Um, link to, 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 to that, I have to, to say that uh, in uh, recent years, ILO has also been in the front run about uh, um, fighting against uh, social inequalities and uh, social protections and uh, making sure that all the fundamental rights, uh, um, labor rights from uh, gender equality at, mm -hmm. uh, at the workplace and uh, uh, child labor, fight against the child labor or, or the forced labor, and a lot of those uh, conventions making sure that not only they are adopted, but they are also uh, implemented uh, uh, by all the uh, countries uh, uh, and which are member of the ILO. We talk about uh, more than uh, 185 uh, membership. Yeah. Over 185, yeah. my goodness. Now, you're, as I recall, ILO is a tripartite <coughs> has an, a tripartite arrangement, which is very unique for the United Nations agencies. Indeed. And you, you work with employers, you work with workers, and you work with governments. How, how, does, how does that all come together? Th that makes it a very unique feature for ILO. If you, you, you look at ILO uh, constituent, as we call them, we have, of course, the, the, the government. Then you have the, uh, the uh, workers' organizations, and as well as the uh, employers' uh, organization. And so you can imagine that it's a constant um, social dialogue, so which forced us um, by uh, coming to agreement and to consensus building to make every effort to make sure that uh, all parties' uh, um, viewpoint are taken into account in the decision-making processes, which we believe should also be reflecting what should normally be happening in the real world, in the outside world, that you know, we, we have to always make sure that uh, you know, the government do not uh, unilaterally set up an agenda without taking into account what the social partners uh, really uh, think in a given country or a given region. Mm -hmm. And with a three-legged stool, you have to have all the legs working together or the stool collapses. Yeah, it just it's, doesn't it's work. Not always, <laughs> it's not always easy, I have to say. I'm quite but, sure. <laughs> uh, but, but it's essential. It's essential to the success of the work we're trying to do. Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to get into social justice, mm -hmm. income inequality, and those types of things. But one issue that we're reading more and more about is youth unemployment, mm -hmm. the opportunities for youth. We see that in many countries of the world, uh, we could probably go around the world and pick the majority of the countries. Mm -hmm. I know Egypt is a major problem and many other areas too, the developed countries too to some mm -hmm. degree. What is ILO doing to help 
work and uh, alleviating this, this situation with youth unemployment because we know if youth are unemployed, they can certainly find other ways to release their energies, mm -hmm, and sometimes mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. counterproductive purposes. But what are you doing mm -hmm. in that area? You know, uh, uh, clearly, the youth unemployment is one of the major, the major pillar of our action on now because what you just said, uh, the, the, the youth bulge is really an issue for all the countries. So uh, the, the we you can appreciate also that though the problem can be a common problem, um, the cause or the solution might not be common to all countries. You, you can't go with one one size fits all approach. You really need to uh, make sure that you adopt uh, your strategy country by country. But what you have to start with is the whole policy dimension, making sure that countries also have the policy that are adequate enough to make sure that you take into account. Uh, countries, you do have countries where uh, maybe 60% of the population is uh, uh, under 25%, uh, for example, Obviously, the, your, your strategy will have to be adjusted accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, so we intervene a lot in the policy level and also going down from the policy to, 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 to proof, kind of what I call the proof concept, making sure that the policy do work uh, as they are they intend to. But I will not say that ILO, ILO will not pretend to have the, 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 the silver bullet to all the youth uh, employment uh, is a, a global um, problem that we all are, are facing, but then we try to really work with the government and with the social partners in country by country or in some of the uh, um, regions, trying to hopefully uh, alleviate the problem. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly a major problem. As you were talking, I was thinking of, of different activities that have happened, and we think back, I guess it was 2013, with that horrific, horrific collapse of a building that mm -hmm. took place in Bangladesh, the Rana oh, yeah. Plaza. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, what uh, what is the International Labor Organization doing to work with the Bangladeshi government to make sure that you don't have another a rerun of that situation? I think 1,100, 1,200 garment workers were mm -hmm. killed and many others injured in that horrific, horrific uh, disaster that took place. But what can ILO do to work with the Bangladeshi government and the employers mm -hmm. and the workers too yeah. to some degree? Indeed, indeed. Uh, that has been a tragedy um, back to um, April 24, uh, 2013, where we have uh, uh, 1,127 20, or so that uh, lost their, their, their life and a lot of uh, people that was injured. And So I know this is a, a fundamental issue of uh, the what we call the OSH, the Occupational Safety and Health at, uh, at Workplace. But very quickly, what we find out is also a, a fundamental issue around the one of the fundamental uh, um, rights uh, of a worker, which is uh, the, the right mm -hmm. to the right to organize and the right to collective bargaining, which you call the Convention um, 87 and 98. Um, so we have been working with the authorities, with the, the, the Bangladeshi government, as well as uh, both social partners. Um, but so they, c they came to some kind of agreement, a tripartite agreement, mm -hmm. in what are the action plan to fix the problem, as you said, to make sure that the problem you know, we don't have any kind of rerun. And uh, so that started with uh, um, really uh, working on a new labor law, a new labor law that was uh, adopted by the, uh, by the parliament and therefore mm -hmm. ratified by the government uh, back to July on the same year, uh, 2013. But very soon we have to, ILO has to really mobilize all the uh, international buyers that, are, mm -hmm. that do business. You have to know that this happened in the, um, what you call the RMG, the, the ready-made garment industry. Um, and from an economic uh, viewpoint, it's uh, close to 20 billion export a year for Bangladesh, uh, and just for the European market, and also to a much less extent the, the, the North America uh, uh, market as well. So it's uh, huge for the economy. Uh, this sector has created um, close to 4 million jobs. We are talking about the youth employment. And out of those 4 million jobs, you have 80% which are women. And that has helped the country uh, achieving a lot of the MDG goals and reducing some of the inequalities. But what we were saying, and we are still saying, is that all those positive dimensions should not hide the principle of thing that we should not do that at the risk of putting the worker's life uh, um, in, in, 
in, in Jeopardy. So we have been working with the international buyers to make sure that all the, uh, uh, um, um, the, the ready-made garment uh, um, facilities are inspected mm -hmm. and the proper action taken. So we talk about uh, roughly uh, 3,500 uh, facilities to be inspected. We have three major uh, and ongoing, what you call the accord, essentially the um, mm -hmm. European uh, um, and buyers uh, with international uh, uh, international unions. You also have uh, um, uh, another group, which is uh, essentially the North American uh, um, um, international uh, buyers. All of them and ILO also with uh, the authorities in the trying to build capacity at the, at the country level. So uh, right now we are in the last phase of inspecting um, and those, uh, those, those facilities. What you have you also been doing, those that were injured, those that were injured especially, that we need to be retrain them, some of them in order for them to be, to go back to, uh, to the work, and some of them may not be doing the same type of work. So you need to make sure that you retrain them in other dimensions so they can look and seek job elsewhere. One important thing also that I have to mention uh, on that, there's so many things that's happening mm -hmm. in, in, in Bangladesh, I, is the fact that we have been working for the past nine months also to make sure that um, the, the all those who lost their life and those that have been injured are properly compensated. Uh, so the compensation uh, issue according to, uh, based on now, uh, uh, international convention signed in ILO, the Convention 121, um, have I is been uh, um, uh, implemented. But I, I also want to submit, uh, and uh, we are working very well with the government, and the we know the, uh, the, the, the authorities are quite very uh, gone ho uh, is to make sure that out of this tragedy, the country adopts a lasting uh, employment uh, scheme, employment injury scheme, to make sure that, God forbid, if tomorrow we were to have some kind of another incident, at least you have an uh, injury scheme uh, um, that takes automatically care of this, like you will see in a lot of uh, um, developed uh, um, countries. So uh, some of my colleagues from our social protection department just came back from mission uh, a week or 10 days ago from uh, Dhaka in trying to push this uh, agenda forward. Mm -hmm. Well, it's certainly very, very important. And uh, do you see, since that horrific accident, and there have been other accidents in other countries, mm -hmm. but do you see that uh, many of the economically developing countries who do a lot of this work, garment work, mm -hmm. uh, they have garment work industries and what have you, garment industries and a variety of things, do you see that there's more interest on their part maybe in raising their standards, maybe having the buyers, be it a Walmart or whatever, J.C. Penney mm. or whatever, mm. they work with you on this to really raise the standards to make sure that this doesn't happen in other countries because it, it happened in Bangladesh, but it perhaps could happen in no, another no, they, country. They, they are really been working with us. Uh, I have to say, um, we because of lack of time, I couldn't go to all the details. We have another major flagship, which we call Better Work which have already been implemented in about seven countries and working together with international buyers to make sure that, um, I will not even talk about raising the standard, I simply will say that, okay, meeting the existing standard, implementing effectively the uh, international standard will be enough to ensure that safety. And uh, so they are, they are cooperating. It's not always uh, easy, we do, we do have different approach, but globally I have to say that they are cooperating and, and I want, uh, we have always been said that, okay, we need to find the right balance for them to keep doing business. You know, I'm not one of those that will um, present or showcase the international buyers as the, 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 the wrongdoers, no. Um, but the fact that could they do better in some area, I also say yes. Mm -hmm. So one need to negotiate, one need to, to, to discuss. And globally, I think things are, are, are moving very and very well. Uh, you, have to, you may also want to know that also some critical partners like the, the U.S. Uh, government and the uh, European Union are also, the, the, they have what they call the sign with the, the government of Bangladesh, what we call the, the, the compact. So it's a, a series of commitment by each party. So, and then this has been monitored every six months or every 12 months to make sure that progressively we get in there. Mm -hmm. Well, you're watching Global Connections Television, which is an independently <coughs> produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections are solely those of the moderator and his guest. Our viewers are invited to go to our website, www.globalconnectionstelevision.com, comment on this program, previous programs, or make recommendations for future topics and speakers. 
Today, we're taking a look at the United Nations International Labor Organization, a mainline agency that's working to help raise labor standards around the world. My guest today is an expert on the ILO. My guest today is Mr. Jobert Wambo. Mr. Jobert Wambo, a Togo national, joined the International Labor Organization in 2013, taking up the position as Deputy Director General for Field Operations and Partnerships. We're talking about your title. This is a good entree, perhaps right into it. What, what exactly does your operation do? What do you do in this capacity, and what does your department do? As uh, I know, uh, International Labor Organization is one of those agencies that we call in the UN system the normative agencies. So because essentially our core business is the setting up of the, the norm and the standard and make sure they are uh, um, put into, into place. On the flip side, we have what you call the technical cooperation, which is really the, the, the development cooperation. Trying we ILO is not and cannot be an operational agency like UNICEF, uh, UNDP, or, on, or, or others. But you have to kind of bridge the norm to the operations. <coughs> That's where we develop our country-based, field-based um, um, and technical cooperation, uh, where we are, um, we are, we have offices in 52 countries. But with our technical cooperation uh, activity, we have activities in more than 100 countries. So we want to make sure that okay, those activities are uh, fairly well and done and effectively. And this is uh, uh, under my uh, responsibility. Plus, obviously, the uh, uh, multilateral cooperation and the partnership with uh, all the stakeholders. Exactly. Now, when you look at the ILO, and our viewers are encouraged to go to <coughs> www.ilo.org, mm. International Labor Organization's website, that so often you see decent work. Uh, that's a very, that's sort of a mainstay of what you're mm. about. How do you define decent work? What is, what is decent mm. work? Essentially, it's a very good uh, model that uh, helps to really say that it's not just a matter of uh, just getting a job. You know, you want to make sure that people have a, jo a job that is uh, reasonably paid, that the, the people have the right for, uh, to, 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 to bargain, so the, what you call the collective bargaining, and the right to, um, to organize, the, to organize themselves. Um, decent work concept also include the fight against against uh, on the uh, the forced labor or the child the child labor and making sure that you have uh, uh, a balance in terms of uh, um, um, treatment gender based or which means that there's no uh, discrimination in terms of gender uh, sex religion uh, um, uh, and etc. So from the essentially is what I would say okay making sure that job happen in in re with respect of what one will consider as the fundamental principle at work, the, the fundamental right and principle at, uh, at, at work. So more or less those are kind of those four pillars that we defend under the concept. Obviously, you also need to have a minimum of social protection. Um, so in other words, if somebody has a job that you, 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 you get up in the morning and you, you, you pay a minimum salary or below minimum salary, uh, and you don't even have any uh, health coverage, or if an accident happens, there's no coverage. We can't call that a decent world. What do we mean to be decent is to have those basic um, principles um, uh, ensured in terms of uh, 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 the, the, the level of salary, the, uh, then the social protection, and the, the your, your right to organize and your right to, uh, to, to negotiate and those basics to be in place. Mm, exactly, very important, extremely <laughs> important. Indeed. We, we've heard a lot about, over the last really 14 years now, about the United Nations Millennium Development Goals to reduce abject poverty, to, to promote universal primary school education, and now in January, let's see, December 31st, 2015, the Millennium Development Goals sort of expire, but the Sustainable Development Goals come online. Mm -hmm. How important is it for those 17 goals, again, to eliminate all forms of poverty, to mm. empower women, to promote sustainable development, to maintain uh, s well, clean oceans, really, coming down to it, and many others. How important is it to factor in work and jobs into this whole discussion on how to achieve those goals and the role that jobs can play? Is that we have been, obviously, as you can guess, we have been uh, um, advocating for making sure that uh, the, the job dimension and the decent work agenda is uh, should be at the center at the center of all those goals, and uh, in the within the 17 goal goal eight call for the the, the inclusive growth and the decent work uh, agenda. But when you look at other goals, also there's a lot that is coming up. Uh, um, 
quickly speaking, I went through it uh, last time again. You can, when you go from the target, from the goals to the target, uh, we count about 40 targets where you will have the, the decent work agenda items, uh, uh, not only in terms of the inclusive growth, but also to fight against, uh, um, against uh, uh, um inequalities, uh, making sure that the, 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 the kids are, are very well fed and then people have a minimum uh, um, social protection in terms of health care and all. So we, we fairly, I believe, the, the 17 goals are um, comprehensive enough to um, to deal with what we believe are the, the critical dimensions in terms of work and workers' rights. Um, now, of course, uh, if I project myself uh, a year down the road, uh, the truth is going to be the pudding, it's going to be the implementation. Mm -hmm. That's why I believe uh, all of us, uh, uh, um, from the government to the international organization, the private sector and so forth, all of us need to really uh, put our head together to make sure that the challenge of implementing is being addressed. Mm -hmm. Years ago, we used to read articles about this vast economic inequality between, uh, mostly, we used to look at Latin America, but that's changing quite mm -hmm. a bit in Latin mm -hmm. America. Now, we can look at some developed countries like the United States, where you, the 1% the, the gets richer, the middle class is being basically uh, minimalized, come right down, minimized, I should say, as far as their purchasing power, and you have a situation where the wealth, there's a wealth transfer, but it's from the middle class to the, the wealthier. How serious of a problem is this, not just for the United States, but there are many countries around the world that are experiencing this. Is it not important that we look at this and to maybe come to the conclusion that we really need a strong, vibrant middle class, people who are consumers, people who have money in their pockets, people who can buy products mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. companies that are making them, as opposed to people who are getting, are really having less and less purchasing power with each passing day, a lot of it primarily because of laws and regu not re your regulations, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the congressional mm -hmm. laws and regulations that are coming out of the U.S. Congress. But how, how big of a problem is this? No, it's very, very clear that the way, I mean, if I can sum up what you're saying, for us, it's very, very clear. Um, if the social inequality side is not addressed, I mean, we're going back to the, uh, the beginning of the 20th, 20th uh, century. Mm -hmm. um, unless we really pay attention to the social inequalities, um, the, the world's going to already, it's uh, from the political front, the, it, we have a lot of challenges nowadays. Um, but my, my worry and our worry in ILO, unless the inequality are properly addressed, the mm -hmm. turmoil is going to be there. It's going to be, uh, to be there. Not only we need to make sure that you have a vibrant middle class, but you have to make sure that... Uh, uh, I mean, we have to make sure that uh, people have a minimum basis, mm -hmm. you know, um, the, 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 the famous freedom from wants mm -hmm. uh, as a minimum for us should not be negotiable. So it's important that in the policy setting that, uh, and the policy making um, authorities, we have to make sure that this is at the center. Um, and the so-called uh, uh, Arab Spring, uh, we, we all were taken by, by, uh, by, by surprise. Yet the, the way uh, uh, Tunisia is, is not uh, uh, a least developed country, it was a middle, uh, middle income country. And, and a lot of other countries that has uh, faced uh, on the so-called uh, uh, Arab Spring were not LDCs. So that tells us mm -hmm. that uh, you, you know, the, the fact that you, you can be richer than uh, LD, LDC status, but if the inequalities uh, and the lack of freedom are at a certain level, the, 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 the social problem will be at your door. Whether you are from nor northern uh, hemisphere or southern hemisphere, the problem is, uh, is there. So I'm a strong believer that, yes, we need to find ways to make sure that the, 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 the purchasing power of the middle class and even the lower class is really uh, as high as possible as a stimulus to our economy. Exactly. Now, as, uh, this is probably the hardest question yet, but uh, from your vantage point, you've, you've seen it from many, many different angles, and you, you've uh, had a very unique experience in other agencies, and now with the International Labor Organization. What do you see as the main challenge as we move well into the 21st century in working on the problems that you've been talking about today and perhaps some others that we haven't talked about? Mm. The, the main challenge uh, to me, um, I think, is the political will the international political will, um, not only to talk the talk, but to walk the walk. I think this is the, and we're going to see it in the implementation of the SDGs. Obviously, it's a very ambitious program. 
we know we have to be ambitious. Even though you may not hit 100% of your target, if you are sufficiently ambitious, we will mm -hmm. that will pull the whole international community and the whole world ahead and on a positive uh, and a dimension. So to me, it's going to be the political will to recognize that together in this world, we, you know, I think the, the divide about uh, Western Europe or Northern countries, developed country versus DC is passé. On the flip side, we also have to know that the traditional ODA is also passé today. We really have to put ourselves in a new, in a, in a new dimensions and look and having the political will and realize that, okay, individually we cannot make it, but together, I think we can. Well, Mr. Gilbert, Wombo, with the United Nations International Orga Labor Organization, you certainly summarized a large number of major problems that we're dealing with. And again, we would encourage our viewers to go to www.ilo.org to get much more information about these topics and many that we didn't cover today, such as human trafficking and a variety of others. But I want to thank you so very much for a very interesting thank and you a so very much, informative uh, program. Thank you for receiving me, for having us in your program. My much pleasure. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm Bill Miller. Thanks for joining us on today's Global Connections program.